Hello, chess friends, and welcome to Yazad of Chess Channel, and welcome to a spectacular game that I found on the official CCR Chess Tom website. We have here Stockfish against Sifos in a beautiful Janowski variation of the Queen's Game decline, and the cool part is that we have started recently uh, here on my YouTube Chess Channel some Janowski variation studies that I think are very, very important because the Janowski variation is a very powerful weapon with the black pieces. For instance, Magnus Carlsen is using this method in all games. He has, I think, also a good success with the Janowski variation of the Queen's Game decline. But today we'll see again how Stockfish is dismantling, how Stockfish is destroying the Sianovsky variation again with some beautiful attacking formation, again with some immortal, immortal tactical shot. So be prepared. This is again chess from another dimension. So let's check out now the game. So Stockfish opened with the move d4. Here it um, uh, the Xifos engine response was d5. We have c4, the Queen's Gambit, e6, the Queen's Gambit declined, knight to c3, and now comes again the Sianovsky variation move, which is now the move a6. We have talked about this idea. It's I think a beautiful idea by black black is trying to play now d takes c4 and is trying to rely on his pawn chain by and afterwards playing the move b5 so you have to make now reaction the best move actually and we have talked about in our mini series about the anovsky variation so, so please check it out here's the link of our uh queen's game decline study so we have talked about now a very important move that white needs to play that white has to play white has to play now the move c takes d5 the exchange variation so basically the anovsky variation forces a trades of uh, pawns now in the center of the board by white so in the continuation we have now e takes d5 by xifos and now comes again this aggressive method queen to b3 hitting immediately the pawn on d5 and now again uh, we have a different sideline in the previous um, analysis that we have talked about we have uh, discussed this idea c6 knight to f6 but now xifos goes into a counter-attack method uh, with the move knight to c6 is attacking now uh, the pawn on d4 in the continuation we have now knight to f3 by stockfish prepared of course the protection of the d4 pawn and now we have bishop to b4 simply playing aggressively here against the knight on on uh, uh, c3 so it's now a different opportunity for black black is defending the pawn on d5 by creating a pin against the knight on c3 it's a wilder it's a sharper line i think that black is using now so uh, there is also maybe this line you could try maybe the bishop to g4 as a method to maybe give up your pawn on d5 but maybe to try bishop to f3 and then pick up maybe the pawn on d for but actually uh, here after bishop to g5 you have to play now f6 we're stepping back to f4 and maybe you can try now this idea bishop to f3 uh, g takes f3 you could maybe pick up the knight on d5 d4 but now after queen to a4 you have to cover now with your knight on c6 and now after queen side castling i think that um, black is facing several tactical problems you could maybe advance the pawn here even to d4 but now with e3 I think um, things are getting com more and more complicated. This bishop will come into the game maybe here on h3. Rook to g1 is going to happen, hitting the pawn. The g file is open. So it becomes, I think, really an open battle. And um, with the bishop here, with such a beautiful activity, I think uh, black is getting destroyed for sure. I think that black doesn't have a comfortable game. The evaluation here is uh, 1.5 in white's favor. So if you want to be part of this game with the black pieces, uh, be my guest. I guarantee you, you'll not have, I think, good success with this particular Line. So, as I said, uh, that's why after move knight to f3, bishop to b4 was played by uh, the Xifos engine. It's not allowing now the move uh, queen to d5 because, of course, we'll simply pick up the queen. Uh, there is no uh, good good way to pick up the queen and afterwards on d5 because of this powerful pin by the bishop against the knight. So, that's why Stockfish develops now in a different way. Bishop to f4. We have now this method, bishop to g4. Again, threatening to pick up the uh, pawn on d4. Now, Stockfish plays the move e3 and here Xifos goes into a wild line with the move bishop to f3 and after g takes f3 okay black has created a double pawn structure black has created a structural weakness in white's position but um, again i would not love to play here the game from uh, from black's perspective because look at this we have the bishop pair on the board still we are going to play rook to g1 we're getting all, uh, our g file attack now probably here against the weak pawn on g7 and the black i think has several problems where to castle in the continuation here knight to the e7 was played by xifos stockfish simply develops to d3 queen to d7 and now h4 stockfish continues now the pressure on the king side and here xifos plays h5 it's not the try it's not allowing here white to advance the pawn here on the king side so now queen side castling here played by stockfish and you see now 
Black has again several choices. Even if you try here queenside casting, in my opinion, it's not so good because here you get knight to a4, knight to c5. I think it's a beautiful opportunity to cement a position around the square. There are even some methods to somehow get rid of the knight, which is of course also uh, the protector of the bishop. Still, we can play rook to g1, hitting the pawn on, on g7. Look at this. This is a beautiful bishop's activity. So maybe you can castle queenside, but I still think that even with the ideas of king to b1, rook to c1, you could get really, really some tactical problems. So in my opinion, again, the bishop pair is much, much better in such an open position. So that's why after move h4, h5 and queenside castling, c was a castle kingside, but now of course Stockfish uses this moment, immediately plays now rook to g1 and occupies now the g file. And from this point on, be prepared. This is a beautiful attacking flow. This is now a beautiful attacking harmony that you see now by the Stockfish engine. So after move rook to g1, we have now bishop to c3, queen to c3, the knight to uh, d8, good move here by Xiphos because you cannot take uh, the pawn on c c7, you're getting destroyed by the rook activity, so if you play queen to c7 or bishop to c7, rook to c8 is going to happen and you're getting pinned on the c file, so that's why it's not possible, in the continuation, Stockfish plays the normal plan, is saying, I have my target, it's the weak pawn on g7, now I'm doubling up the rooks and I will destroy you now simply on this beautiful g file so in the continuation knight to e6 was played by xiphos rook to g1 g6 we have bishop to uh, e5 by stockfish and look at this both bishops are targeting the king uh, both rooks are targeting the king with queen <coughs> the queen will come into the game eventually with queen to c2 so slowly but surely again stockfish is building really a monstrous really an immortal attacking formation so in the continuation rook to c8 of course uh, here xiphos has to search for opportunities on the c file we have queen to d2 uh, getting out of this tactical mess on the c file now we have c5 king to b1 getting again out of this mess we have now the move c4 bishop to c2 and now king to h7 uh, here played by xiphos getting out of this g file attack you could maybe try here um, an aggressive method with the move c3 trying maybe at least somehow open the position maybe this was the way to go for xiphos but now after b takes c3 queen to uh, queen to b5 we can cover ourselves with the move uh, bishop to b3 maybe this was the way to go maybe at least xiphos has some kind of a chance here uh, to attack the position as I said, still white is much, much better here, but in my opinion, maybe this was the only chance to spice up the game a little bit here on the queen side. But okay, here after move bishop to c2, uh, that stockfish played, we have now king to h7 by Xiphos, we have now f4, we have now knight to g7, controlling further the f5 uh, square, because if you don't react, of course, correct, if you start to push some pawns here, then we play simply f5, and the position simply explodes now on the king side, so that's why knight to g7 is a must move here in order to control further the position so stockfish goes rook to g5 uh, we have a rook to uh, c6 and now a beautiful sharp tactical move queen to e2 look what this move is doing because let's see a bad continuation for instance you play rook to c8 we're just playing a bad move here for black but look at this what happens uh if you uh get if you play uh, this kind of a continuation maybe you can pause the video uh this wasn't played in the game but maybe you can pause the video and try to see now the best continuation here for uh for white pause the video and try to see here really the mortal tactic let's practice a little bit chess tactics here also in this video okay here the correct move would have been, of course, if this would have been the continuation, queen to h5. Here we have even the queen sacrifice possibility. After knight to h5, rook takes h5. You cannot pick up, of course, the rook because of this bishop's activity. You have to step back to g8, and now you get rook to h8. A beautiful, um, immortal uh, checkmate here by this bishop's and rook's activity. So really, really uh, beautiful tactical preparation. After move queen to e2, this is now a serious threat, queen to h5. So that's why uh, Xiphos gets out of this mess uh, get, gets the king to g8 we have now bishop to g7 king to g7 and now f5 because that's the move that's the move that is breaking really black's position because with the move knight to g7 uh, black had a decent control around the square so now with the move f5 we are breaking and entering now in black's camp so in the continuation rook to h8 
e4 stock which continues now the pressure d takes e4 bishop to e4 there's no time to pick up the pawn on d4 the rook is hanging you have to step back with the rook on f6 and you see xifos played i think the only moves that were possible xifos played very really the most important defensive strategies here rook with defense uh, controlling of course the g6 square which is really the clear target in black's position really, really good defense so far by black so after move f takes g6 uh, we have f takes g6 f4 played by stockfish again queen to d4 is not a possibility uh, let's see what happens this wasn't played in the game but if you pick up just one pawn here then you're getting destroyed with rook to d1 the queen has to step back and look at this what kind of an opportunity we have here bishop to g6 notice that you cannot pick up with the rook because the knight is hanging so you have to pick up with the knight but now you're getting destroyed rook to d7 you have to cover now with your rook look at this f5 is going to happen you can even sacrifice another rook a rook to d7 but look at this queen to uh queen to e5 is a possibility queen to f6 doesn't make sense you get simply rook to g6 you have to step back now we play f takes g6 now you have to step back and now look at this with queen to um uh, queen to uh, e8 it's even a fourth checkmate we'll simply pick up the rook and then you're getting destroyed here on the seventh rank so look how really tactically rich this position so there's simply no time to pick up just one pawn here in the center of the board really really immortal tactics here again by stoffers so after move f4 we have a rook to uh, f8 by c plus bishop to c2 we have queen to d6 and now queen to h5 look at this the g file attack is something that bothers black really through the whole game uh, black tried to defend the position on the f file but is getting destroyed now on the h file very really beautiful again uh, tactics here by stockfish so c3 now comes this move that maybe was the must move previously now uh, cephos is desperately trying to open the position but stockfish simply goes b takes c3 we have a rook to h8 queen to e2 rook takes h4 and now again it's breaking and entering motif f5 again simply destroying black around the square g6 this was the clear target through the whole game really really wild stuff here by stockfish 50 so queen to b6 we have bishop to b3 we have now queen to d6 uh, we have f takes g6 uh, rook to h2 queen to c4 again Getting, of course uh, the queen a little bit behind trying also some uh, even checkmate threats maybe here on g8 in the continuation we have now rook to h8 uh, rook to e5 queen to d7 and now king to a1 knight to g6 but now after queen to b4 look at it still we have the spin we're getting the rook into the game we're getting the bishop into the game so so far first um stockfish regrouped here a little bit and then included some other pieces into the game so we have here rook to d6 bishop to c2 rook to h6 and now d5 simply pushing the pawn further queen to d8 and now after rook to g5 it's simply enormous pressure again um, uh, around the square g6 and even if black defends this position somehow even if black reaches maybe the end game stage still it's winning we have to also consider an option uh to when we reach the end game stage when white is having maybe three pawns against black's two pawns and of course it's a winning end game so even if black defends this position in somehow then still white is winning because of this pawn majority so a5 we have queen to d4 hitting the king uh king to f7 uh king to f7 rook to f1 hitting the king again and now queen to uh, e5 sneaking in it with, with the queen getting the queen more and more active here we have now b6 uh rook to g1 now after rook to h7 stockfish now decides to simplify the game but actually it's game over after rook to g6 rook takes g6 the queen is coming into the game and in this position xifos resigns so let's see the possible continuation of course with just picking up um here the uh, the rook on g6 you have to step back now we play just one check again another check and after rook to f uh, king to f8 you have here this possibility rook to g8 of course leads into a beautiful beautiful checkmate pattern so really great game really immortal attack against the janowski variation of the queen's game declined uh, you see there is in my opinion only one good way to play the janowski variation this is not the way uh in the continuation of our janowski variation series the mini series sort of i will show you the method how to play the janowski variation in a correct way uh with the different sidelines for black uh, this is now our last video uh that we'll cover with some games and uh, i'll cover just one more video about the janowski variation with the from black's perspective when i, when I will show you how to play also this particular sidelines in the correct way 
and then it will be really our last Janowski variation video. Maybe we'll cover also some other Janowski variations when I cover maybe some other games from some tournaments or uh, maybe with some current current games that are going on. Then of course I will add these games into the into our Janowski variations mini series. But so far uh, this one and the next one will be our last studies about the Janowski variation of the Queen's game decline. So okay, I hope that you enjoyed the game. I've really enjoyed it a lot. If you want to see more brutal tactical games like this, check out our comments chess games played by computer series with some more games played by Stockfish, Alpha Zero, Lila Zero and many many more. And if you want to see more about the Queen's Game Decline uh, with the Yanovsky variation with some other sidelines like the Chigod in Defense, Tadar Defense and many many more, here's also the link of our playlist. We have now more than 90 videos about the Queen's Game Decline so you can check it out and have I think a good preparation in our D4 studies. So and of course if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and what to say. Chess is the best of course.